Hello everybody, this is Joe the Orange and I'm back from my two week break. I basically didn't play that much during the PTR or this patch. Actually, I've only played about fucking five games of the new patch. So I haven't done much testing at this stage, but this is what I think will happen based on the patch notes themselves. And another thing to take into consideration is that ranked mode is coming out as going to be tier 5 commanders and tier 5 units. So when I am going to be talking about how strong certain things are, it is going to be based around tier 5. For this video, I'm going to start off with what I think are going to be the weaker units and commanders, and then work my way up into what I think will be DOP shit, <laughs> basically. And the thing that is obviously going to be the fucking weakest is War Dogs. I mean, <laughs> who did not see that coming? If you've watched this channel, I already didn't like them. And they got worse. How did they get... <laughs> like, how did they get worse? It's just... It fucking cracks me up. Not so much for people that enjoy playing War Dogs. And the other thing is, when ranked does get introduced, Boudicca is going to be capped at tier 5. Before her rebellion gets any good. So, you have a shit commander. You have shit fucking units. The only time I would play with a Boudicca in ranked, remember it's tier 5 commanders, tier 5 units, is if they're using archers or slingers. Which is saying something, because she's not even meant to be a ranged commander, but we'll get into that later. Now this next one might piss a few people off. But I think elephants are going to be shit and ranked. Honestly I do, because it's tier 5, and they just took a big fucking nerf to the face. Unlike the rest of the elephants, they didn't get a charge ability, they just got a straight up negative 25% armor nerf. And some of the units that are going to be very popular in ranked, just straight up counter elephants now. The third choice was a hard one, it was between catapults and barbarian infantry, including Felksman. Both units will still see competitive play, it's just that, well let's talk about this catapults first, let's start with them. I don't think people will play three catapults anymore, I think it'll be more like one or two. Because they're not putting out the damage that they used to, so they're going to be used in ranked mode mostly to bait the enemy out. And for that, you don't need three catapults. Also, it's going to be capped at tier 5, so they don't have that accuracy that they do have at higher tiers, or even the consumables they have at higher tiers. So in my opinion, you bring one or two, and then if the enemy has catapults, you can move your catapults up and shoot theirs, it's just, they're going to be used to bait the enemy to come for. Now let's move on to the Barbarian Infantry. Well, the Felksmen, we can start with them. They won't have their hamstring ability. So that's half the benefits of going Felksmen, just chucked in the bin. And the Barbarian Commanders get most of their strength from higher tiers. They're not that great at lower tiers. Rebellion is kind of shit. Uh... Defiance, surprisingly at tier 5, is not that great. I think you will see a bit of Versi infantry, just so they can chunk fire at the Stakesmen. Also maybe a few Felksmen for the same reason, you go Versi, you chuck the fire. But apart from that, they're not in a great position. And some units I totally forgot about is Carthage infantry, the spears and the swords. I think the swords you won't see at all. <laughs> There's just better options. And the same with the spears. There's just... There's just better options out there. So they're my real third choice. Those dudes are fucking useless. <laughs> but now it's time to move on to some of the... Decent stuff in the game. It's a tie between Roman Infantry... And... Uh... Cav. Cav in general. 
But let's start off with the Roman Infantry. Oh, and by the way, I did originally say in my videos, ranking units is a dumb fucking idea, but I find it fun. Like, it is dumb. Because depending on who plays it, it's a totally different experience. So while I rank this shit, keep that in mind. This is just for me personally. This is what I think. You can have your own fucking opinions and shit. For example, everything I read on Discord and Reddit, I totally disagree with. <laughs> Every time I glance into those, uh, what do you call them, social networks, and to read the feedback on the game, I just can't believe how much I disagree with almost every single post. And the worst thing is, you ask what tier they are, and it's like tier 4. Fuck it, so the cunt has played for about a week. <laughs> and he's, here he is with his feedback. Archers should outrun everything because I died. Oh. I played up to T4. I have so much experience in this game. And then you have the straight up lies. People are so fucking dumb. They don't think you can look up their profiles. I had this guy tell me, I get top score like 90% of the time. So I went, okay, that's pretty fucking good. This guy knows what he's on about. So I looked up his profile. He got top score 8% of his games. He's played twice as much as me. And he's still shit. But he, he just bullshits. He just makes crap up. Like, he does not get top score 90% of the time. It's actually the opposite. It's worse than the opposite. 8% of the time, he gets top score. And he's all over Reddit and Discord. So I decided to call him out. <laughs> and then I got a warning. So fuck that shit, they can suck my dick. And the funniest part was, <laughs> the funniest part was, where they are trying to give me the warning, I just muted them. <laughs> so I thought I'll definitely get banned because they're trying to tell me stop doing shit and I'm just like, mute. <laughs> but nothing happened. So at that stage, I just banned myself. I've heard enough of the shit that happens in those social networks. It's all crap. People will say anything to get the one unit they played more powerful. But that's enough ranting. Let's talk about what is this fourth strongest? Oh, sorry, the fourth weakest. We're doing the opposite. We're doing the weakest first. Units in the game. And in my opinion, that will be Roman infantry in ranked. Because they don't have the higher tier SAR. If they had the tier 9 SAR, it'd be a different story. Now, some of you wanted me to give Sulla a nickname. There's not much. There's not much that rhymes with Sulla. So I've settled for Salmonella. Because he scares the enemy so much, they get bloody diarrhea. <laughs> now, the only reason I haven't ranked the Roman infantry lower is because they will do good against bad players. <laughs> That's just what they do. At the lower ranks. Also, they still have access to stakes, which don't friendly fire anymore. So they are pretty damn good at protecting your range units and setting up ambushes. It is a bit of a gamble, but a gamble that pays off a lot of the time. So I think you will see them in ranks play, but I'm not sure you will see much of them at the higher, higher fucking ELOs. Another reason being is I think that a lot of the units that are strong at the moment do counter Roman infantry. With that said, let's move on to Cav. And I'm going to put all the Cav in the same box because I think they're all pretty good at tier 5. Range units are definitely going to be in every fucking team when it comes to ranked. So Cav can be good. The problem is with the spear buff, and the stake spam is going to be hard for them to actually attack any ranged units. But they still have their uses as in they can scout and they can, in Versi's case, chuck fire on people that are camping. Also, Scipio will be surprisingly good. Because he's not at that tier where he starts to fall off and the enemy kind of won't wipe him out in one charge. 
I haven't tested Cav enough to know which one will be the best in ranked. But I'm going to say it's going to be either Barbarian Cav or Scipio at tier 5. But let's move on to either, depending how you want to look at the 5th shitters or the 2nd best units in the game. In my opinion, it's going to be Slingers, Archers and Pikes. Now let me start off with the Pikes, because people might be thinking, Are you fucking serious mate? They're so good. How could they be ranked only 2nd best? Well at tier 5, they're not that amazing. They don't have all the speed buffs yet. They still have the ability to scare away any infantry on the field. As well as being able to camp better than anyone else can. So I think you will see a few pikes here and there still. Even though they are slow at tier 5. With that said, let's move on to the slingers. And the only reason... They are fucking up at this tier is because of the map selection for ranked. Which is Tittyberg Forest, Rubicon, and pa Passage of August. <laughs> I just butchered the fuck out of most of those names, but you know. These are all maps that Slingers can do well in. If all the maps were going to be in rotation for ranked, there would be no use for Slingers. Also, it's at tier 5 where Slingers can actually do some damage. Which means I should maybe level up those units. But, I oh wait, no I don't because I have premium barbarians that have slingers at tier 5 on Boudicca. This is a premium unit I would expect to see most in ranked play. In fact, the only one I would go. Because ambush gives you that 10% more range and you have strain. So you are well out shooting the archers as far as range is concerned. Not only that, you can charge now with Fury, which adds Missile Block to your unit. It might not sound that great, but that charge lasts just as long as uh, Barrage. So the minute you do get Barrage, you can pop that charge and it will stop you from taking Missile Damage. Now the one thing I do find interesting, the, the unit I think will be best in ranks for Barbarians is a premium unit. But saying that, it's the only premium unit I think you will see at the higher tiers in ranked. And there are alternatives that can be just as good. So I wouldn't say it's pay to win because it's only one fucking unit. And there are other units just as good. Also, that's only for this one ranked season. Once we move on to the higher tiers, that won't even be an option anymore. Which brings me to archers. They're always going to be decent, at least. At tier 5. Now they won't be out shooting the slingers or the scorpions or catapults. But they always have the advantage of being able to shoot over difficult terrain. So depending on the situation and depending on how good the archer player actually is. They can, they can outplay other ranged units. It's just going to be harder than usual. The archers at the lower tiers don't have the range they have at the higher tiers. But saying that, the infantry at the lower tiers doesn't have the shield block available to them compared to the higher tiers. So it's one of those units I'm wondering if the scorpions and the slingers will, will replace them for the first season of ranked. Or if they will still be viable. Now let's move on to the golden choices. This is the super round of the greatest units available in Arena. If you only want to play the best of the best, the cream of the corrupt, this is a shit for you. This is the ultimate supreme stuff in the game, in my opinion. One of them is coming out of the Greek faction strongest. Fuck. So damn strong. They go, oh, I am the strongest. I am the greatest of all time. Actually, I'm going to do that unit last. Because it has a special place in my heart. Instead, I'm going to cover the two greatest options in the Roman faction. And they are coming out strong, boy. They are coming out. They are looking at you and they are fucking you up. You don't want to mess with Roman range units at the moment. If you are a ranged player, and you played the Greeks, and you played the Barbarians, chuck that shit 
in the bin. Just in the bin. Go plop, plop. I chuck you in the bin because the Romans are coming up. Now back in the old days, the Romans weren't the greatest ranged faction ever. It was like they had catapults. Oh, whoop de do, whoop de uh, fucking do. But now, surprisingly enough, the units that used to be kind of piss weak are just so damn good. Let's start off with the scorpions. Now, what they do have is a range advantage over every unit apart from catapults. And in the map's release for ranked. It's mostly flat ground or stuff you can shoot down. Once again, like the Slingers, if every map was in rotation, I would put uh, Scorpions down one rank. But fortunately for you Engineer players, there's only three maps available. And they all favour the Scorpions. Now the thing that tops them off, the thing that gets them above Slingers, is their ability to deploy six stakes, two stakes per unit, and you can go you can go three scorpions no problem. They have long range harassment, but if a unit tries to close the gap and charge them, they always have those stakes there. And when anything is trying to attack those stakes, they can shoot the fuck out of them. They are in such a great position at the moment. They're so damn strong. Especially with those maps being selected. Now, it's not the highest scoring unit, but when it comes to actually winning a game, they are very good. So in ranked, you will see them even more than you will see in solo queue. I would go so far to say that you'll see almost at least one Scorpion player per team. Saying that, let's move on to Javelins. Now, if you watched my last video, you know how strong these guys can be, and they got buffed. They are laser beams at the moment. Their accuracy has gone through the roof. If you have played Javelins, you know what I'm talking about. It's ridiculous. And now, putting down Caltrops is so damn easy, it's hard to die to Cav. At the lower tiers, they're not as amazing, because they can take Archer Fire. Which might put them back a bit. If they were at tier 8, tier 9, etc. Then Javelins would be definitely in every team. But since this is going to be at tier 5. There might be a few teams that don't run Javelins. But I expect them to see a lot of play still. Now let's move on to the number 1 unit. Their greatest thing that's ever been put in this game. Since Silver Shield Swordsman, we're talking about the new spears. You have a choice between Leo and Millie. I would personally go Millie, but you might go Leo because you're a bit of a fucking weak cut. <laughs> they both have their advantages and disadvantages. When it comes to playing defensively, Leo is just the best. He won't lose in melee combat. He has his raised shields. With the addition of not friendly firing with phalanx, he is so damn good. And then on the other end of the scale, you have Mele Vanille! And he's just the greatest commander of all time with the greatest unit of all time. He will kill everyone. He's the greatest. You can't beat him. He's the best Cav commander available. The problem I see is that Millie is only strong because of what is strong in the meta at the moment. So if they do nerf him, they'll probably nerf his ability to catch range units. Which would just make some of the other choices even stronger still. Which is why I have stopped playing him. I can see the nerfs coming already. Oh my god, he's too good at chasing down range units. Let's nerf him. So he sucks against ranged units, and he also sucks against infantry. Which is why I've been leveling up Sulla, he's my new favourite. The reason being is, yeah, Millie is too strong at the moment. With the spear changes, he's just turned into some fucking beast. An unstoppable beast, an unstoppable force that can't continue. And I guarantee he's going to get nerfed sooner or later. 
which means that ranged units are just going to get better. So that's why I'm just playing scorpions and javelins, etc. But what I would expect in ranked is at least one Leo or one Millie until the nurse come in, because at the moment they're just so damn good. I expect them to get nerfed before ranked even hits the open servers. And once they do get hit, it means that infantry is going to be at the lower tiers. It's going to be a ranged game, basically. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and thumbs up and all that shit. And in the meantime, I am trying to make a clan of some sort. I just need to decide on a name. And there's only going to be one rule, and that is don't fucking annoy me. <laughs> Which is secretly the rule for every clan and every social media etc is don't annoy the people that run it and then they just pretend they have rules you can't do this you can't do that blah 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 but the secret rule is don't annoy the people that can ban you i'm just being upfront about it i don't want people annoying me so if they annoy me i'll just go wait mate go sit in the naughty corner and if you're going to keep acting like a fucking asshole I'll just kick you. Now the list of things that annoy me is pretty big. Basically every colour apart from orange. <laughs> Blue's alright. I'll slip the blue colour in there. Pink as well. Red on the other hand can get the fuck out. Get the fuck out man. You're on the enemy team if you're red. That's just the way this game works. Okay? So you have to get out. You just have to go. Also all the half ass colours. The ones that haven't decided what colour that they're going to be. Like violet red. It says it's red, but it looks fucking pink. I don't trust it. It's a fake colour. It's faking it. And the worst colour of the lot has to be aqua. Dude, I've seen water. You don't look like it. Stop fucking making shit up. But that's enough about colours. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and thumbs up and all that shit. And I'll see you next time.